Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So there's a lot going on in the market in regards to inflation expectations, which is why I think we have seen a rise in gold and silver prices. So I thought I'd show you guys how to adjust prices for inflation. So in this video, we'll just be requiring a few packages, Quamod Performance Analytics and QuanDL. You are required to get an API key from QuanDL. So if you don't have an API key, you can always register at Quando. I'll put the link down below. And I'm gonna use Quando to extract silver and gold prices, but I'll be using the Federal Reserve of Economic Data, also known as FRED, to get our CPI time series. And both of these will be in a monthly series. So we'll start off by getting the CPI by running get symbols, FRED. And I'm gonna be using the not seasonally adjusted data. So the ticker for that is CPI, AU, CNS. I'm going to send that to my global environment. I'm going to set auto assign equal to false. So I'm going to run this line. All right, so after we get our CPI data, I'm going to get the returns by running ROC. I'm going to use CPI or type. I'll use continuous. And I'm going to set the column names of CPI equal to CPI. So I'm going to run these two lines. All right, so now for the ticker, I'm going to use LBMA forward slash gold. And I believe these are from the London Bullion data set. I couldn't find any other price series that went as far back as these two. And for silver, it'll be LBMA forward slash silver. So I'll be running gold first. All right, guys, so I'm going to request this data from Quandle by using the Quandle wrapper. I'll pass in the ticker and also my API key. You can always hard code your API key. And I want this returned as an XCS object. So I'll go ahead and run this line. We'll take a look at the data. So here we have gold prices in USD, British Pound, and Euro. So I'll be using the USD, and I want to extract the AM column. So I'll start off by extracting the first column. I'll save it here. So I'm going to convert this data to a monthly series to match our CPI data. So I'll run this line. We'll take a look at our data. So now we have prices by month. So for this tutorial, I'll be extracting the high column. And this is the column I'll be adjusting for inflation because I want to check what the maximum price was historically after I adjust for inflation. So going back to the code, I'll run STK and I'll extract the high column. I'm going to then rename the column of stock by using paste zero, pass in the ticker, and this will be dot high. I will then calculate the returns of this time series, and I'm going to round that to five decimal places, and I'll use ROC, STK, type, continuous. So I'm going to copy this line since I'll be changing the column name of RETS. All right, so now I'm going to merge all the data by running naomit merge my price data, my returns, and the CPI. So we take a look at that data set. This is what it looks like. All right, so now to adjust prices for inflation, what I need to do is I need to take the cumulative sum of the CPI returns in reverse order, and that'll give us the inflation rate for each of these months. So I'll go ahead and add a column here called CPI multiplier. 
I'll take the reverse order cumulative sum of the CPI column. I'll add a one and that'll be our multiplier for that month. So if we go back to our script, here I'll write the CPI multiplier. So I'll name my column CPI mult. And I'll do one plus, I'll do reverse, come sum of the reverse DT CPI. So if we run that line, we'll take a look at our data. We'll go to the very last row. So in summary, what this CPI multiplier is doing is I'm just adding the cumulative sum in reverse order. I'm adding a one and that'll be our multiplier to adjust the prices for inflation. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to multiply this column called CPI multiplier times the prices. And I'm going to be adding a column that will be for our inflation adjusted price. So I'll call it ADJ PRC and that will be DT our CPI multiplier multiplied by our price data which is the first column. So I'll go ahead and run that line. Now we have inflation adjusted prices in this column. All right, so now I'm gonna plot the price series for both the nominal prices and the inflation adjusted prices. So I'll extract the minimum price and the maximum price of our series so that we can adjust the Y scale on our plots. So I'll take the minimum of our adjusted price and the minimum of our nominal price and take the minimum of those two columns. Similarly, I'll take the max by running the same thing. So I'll change this to G max. This will be max. So I'll go ahead and run these two lines. All right, so now I'm gonna plot the series together so this will be for our regular prices. I'll use Y lim is equal to C, G min, and G max. So I'll run that line. So I'll write lines. I'm gonna plot my adjusted prices. And I'll set the color equal to red. All right, so if we take a look at our plot, it's interesting to see that for gold, this high back in what it looks like to be 1980s or late 1970s almost matches our high price in 2011. So it kind of made a double top. And as of now, it looks like it's trending back up. So it will be kind of interesting to see if it makes another double top with this high over here. And this value is roughly 2100. All right, so now let's take a look at silver. All right, so for silver, I'm just gonna be running this block. So if we take a look at the plot. All right, so here we see the silver chart. Again, the red price is the inflation adjusted price and the black line is just the nominal price. So we do see that we created a double top by using regular prices, but as far as inflation adjusted prices, we can see that silver has a much higher potential than gold does at its current price of around $25 per ounce to well over hundred per ounce. And the exact price I got for this maximum point was 109.64. So roughly $110 per ounce, which is pretty crazy. All right guys, so that's how you adjust prices for inflation. I hope this video was informative. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.